let me show you what I'm working on. Yesterday evening, one of my neighbors called me. He lives on the next ranch over. He called me and uh, said he had a cow die. And I've told all my neighbors around that raise cattle if they have a cow die, let me know and I'll come dispose of it for them. So yesterday evening, in typical hillbilly fashion, I went next door and picked up a dead cow. So I know this isn't pretty to look at, but it's part of nature. It's part of the life and death cycle of nature where my neighbors had a had this cow expire on them. And so I moved it to, to a more photogenic location. And so for the next few days, I'm gonna try my hand at camera trapping. So where the cow had died on the neighbor's place was in some pretty tall grass. And so it was from a photographic standpoint, just wasn't in a good location. And so knowing how nature works and knowing that this cow won't go to waste, something's gonna eat on it, whether it's vultures or whether it's coyotes or, or, or bobcats or whatever, something will come feed on this cow. So instead of leaving it in the high grass on the neighbor's ranch, I drug it to a place that's a little more photogenic, a little more open, and I just drug it out to this little farm road that's here that cuts through the grass. And so what I'm doing here, instead of sitting on it every day with a camera, I've got a camera trap set up. So let me show you the setup here. You can see I've got this camera housing pretty close to the cow, but I've got a wide angle lens inside of it. Uh, typically an inanimate object like this camera housing, animals will pay attention to it, but it really doesn't spook them that much at all for whatever reason. Inside this housing, I've got a Canon uh, 60D camera with a, uh, with a, I, I don't remember the millimeters, but it's a 16 to 35 millimeter equivalent zoom. It's a crop body. So I've got it set on probably about 20, 24 millimeters, something like that, wide angle, because I think these shots work great when the animal's at wide angle. And the little white box to the right with the tape on the back of it, that's actually a passive infrared sensor. And so whenever something moves in front of the camera, it'll, it's, the motion sets off the camera and triggers the camera. And then on the camera, I'll open up the camera in a minute to show you, but on the camera, there's a wireless flash transmitter. And you can see here wrapped up in this Ziploc bag, I've got a flash with a battery pack, essentially like studio flash. Let me open up the back here and I'll show you what's inside. If you notice here, I've got the camera. This hook to the, the cord here runs across to the passive infrared sensor. And then uh, I've got the camera hooked up, got the battery pack on it. And the reason why the battery pack, it just extends the life if it gets cold out here. I've got a... Uh, uh, wireless flash transmitter that goes over to the wireless flash receiver that's on the flash and then the whole thing just works in concert together you end up taking a lot of pictures that you don't want but that's part of the game too it's part of the fun so i'm going to leave this rig out here for about a week and then i'm going to come back and hopefully something has taken advantage of this cow and uh and it'll feed all kinds of critters buzzards little bugs uh coyotes bobcats whatever else comes to it we're, we're hoping uh, we'll get some great shots out of this deal couple of weeks and 3,700 images later, you can see here that I got plenty of pictures and plenty of pictures of pretty much the same thing. One thing I really didn't account for when I set the camera out at first was, uh, well, actually a couple of things I didn't account for was one, it's a bad camera angle. And two, the sheer number of buzzards that would come here at first. And so I got a lot of pictures of buzzards, both turkey vultures and black vultures. And those things were just coming in and just hanging around. And you got to remember the motion sensor can't distinguish between a weed blowing or the same buzzard over and over. So it's just going to continue to take pictures uh, as long as there's something moving in front of the camera. And so that, that's what accounts for this. So after a couple of weeks when I realized I didn't have the best angle of the cow and also in the background you can see there's some highline wires and I really, I really thought I had those out of there when I first composed it. But uh, I decided to move the camera. And so it faced more the head of the cow and probably a little better angle. The one problem with this angle is it faces the sun a little bit, but I expected any kind of animal that was going to come or any kind of interesting animal that I wanted to get pictures of, like a coyote or bobcat would come at night. But unlike before, the buzzards didn't come in big numbers. I did get a couple of night visitors, not great shots, but I did, did get a couple of night visitors. But something about this angle, I don't know if it was a weed or what, but it took literally thousands of pictures of just the dead cow laying there. So... The thing about camera trapping that I mentioned before, it's hit or miss. Uh, sometimes you get good shots, a lot of times you don't, and this is one of those times. So after three weeks of time, uh, you know, I got a couple of good shots. 
but nothing really to write home about. But that doesn't deter me because this is a real passive way of shooting some interesting pictures. I've had really good luck in the past and it's always worth just kind of seeing what's out there and seeing what's moving around. And it really serves as a set of eyes for me even when the sun goes down. But in the end, I'm not going to say the whole excursion was a total loss. I mean, that's you put the camera out there knowing you're taking your chances on whether you'll get a picture of something or not. In this case, I got pictures of a lot of something, a lot of turkey vultures. But again, it's not a complete loss. I got a few keepers in there that I can use for some other project. Maybe a, uh, if I do ever do a project on turkey vultures, I, I've got some pictures of them just at a kind of unusual angle, wide angle, but interacting with one another in a way and conveying that, that behavior in a way that a telephoto lens just really can't. And here's another species of vulture that came in, black vultures, and again, uh, just showing typical behavior of how they they recycle dead animals back into the environment. We did have a couple of night visitors that were interesting. It's not the not the coyote picture I was hoping for, but here's a coyote that came in at night to try to feed on the animal. But I only got a couple of pictures of him before he left, and then possum showed up a few nights. And, you know, the cool thing about doing these pictures at night and using an off-camera flash is, again, it's almost like a studio flash where you get interesting shadows and then the, the, the uh, exposure's long enough that you can see the stars in the background. But just because this particular time didn't turn out how I wanted it to, I have had some luck in the past with doing camera trapping. And here's some of those pictures here of a, of a bobcat at night uh, feeding on a dead deer carcass. And then, you know, one of my favorite subjects were white-tailed deer. And I, I just love, again, how you can get a studio-quality flash, uh, studio-quality lighting set up out of, out of a camera trap like this and really set your camera at angles that uh, at least I haven't, haven't really captured pictures of deer of before, like this low-angle, wide-angle shot with a deer walking past. And then here's another shot. One of my, probably one of my favorite camera trap shots of this buck. Uh, coming in and you can see the stars in the background. It's just a pretty remarkable shot and the flash looks great, too And then again a couple of does I uh, love the stars in the background just a little pinpoints of light and that's all That's the advantage of using a camera trap with the DSLR as opposed to using just a regular game camera Is that you can customize the shutter settings and move the lights around and that way you get a, a real off-camera not straight-on flash look but you can manipulate it as such so you get shutter speeds that will include the stars in, in the picture as well. Another white tail buck with just a single flash coming in from the side. And then a feral hog. And then a bobcat winking at me. And that bobcat, oh, this is the same bobcat you saw before, but it would come into that dead deer carcass for days. And I've just got a lot of pictures of it. And really, it's a. Uh, it's a pretty remarkable setup. So again, camera trapping, it's hit and miss sometimes, but it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of trial and error trying to get everything set up right. But if you've got a place that you can set a camera trap out for a couple of weeks, I think you'll always be surprised at the images you get in the end. I know I have.